All right, ladies and gentlemen, half of the tournament bracket now decided. One of our next two fighters will fill a spot on the other side as Belgium takes on Australia. First to the ring, he's a 2008 WBC Muay Thai World Super Cruiserweight Champion. Looking for his first glory win, please welcome Steve McKinnon. Well, fighting out of Australia, it's not a shock that Steve McKinnon would walk out to ACDC. And what a great song. I love this song. It, 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 it epitomizes his uh, in-your-face aggressive style, too. Vicious, whipping, fast, left roundhouse kick, and his right ain't bad either. And he's basically a kick first and punch second style of fighter. He's physically very strong, and you can tell that just by looking at him. McKinnon really likes to get this fight in the phone booth, trade tit for tat. I think the key will be trying to catch Philippe Verlinden. His opponent tonight, known for his speed and power punching ability, please welcome Philippe Verlinden. Daniel Ilunga came in as the number one ranked light heavyweight. This man, Philippe Verlinden, is number two, and many believe he has a shot to get to the finals. Yeah, he's got a phenomenal style, not that much different from Daniel Ilunga, a man that he met earlier on. An excellent combination between hands and feet, quick and relaxed. Exceptional movement for a big guy, and he will fly on occasion with a, a knee or a jump roundhouse kick. But Berlinden is known primarily as a puncher because he has a preference for boxing, although he does like to finish his boxing techniques with a low kick, uh, very much in the traditional of the Dutch style, which he's trained so much in, even though he's from Belgium. Here are the numbers for our third fight in the light heavyweight quarterfinals. Well, Philippe is the fresher of the two in the age department. Uh, experience is relatively close with McKinnon over twice the as many knockouts as the Belgian Bull, which uh, will represent a problem for Verlinden if he stands in front of the smashing machine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the fighters for our third light heavyweight quarterfinal matchup. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a five-time world champion, two-time Australian champion with a karate black belt. His professional record, 49 wins, six losses, 37 big wins by knockout. At 1.88 meters, standing six feet, two inches tall, he weighed in at 95 kilos, 209 pounds, representing Australia and rank number five in the world, here is Steve, the Smashing Machine, McKinnon! His opponent tonight standing on my left and fighting out of the red corner, a 2010 IFMA Muay Thai heavyweight champion, coming off a glory six Istanbul victory. His record, 40 wins, nine losses, one draw. At 1.89 meters, six feet, two and one half inches, weighing 94 kilograms, 207 pounds. Here tonight representing Belgium and rank number two in the world, it's Philippe, the Belgian boy. The third man inside the ropes, Chris Wagner. Right, General, I want a nice clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. In case of a knockdown, you go to the neutral corner. I tell you to go to remain. That's how I call you out. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Fight fair, fight hard. Touch gloves. Rolls on. Philippe Verlinden in the black. Steve McKinnon in the white trunks. 
McKinnon comes out uh, with a jump uh, kick and a Superman punch. Folks didn't land, but he's going to want to do some damage to slow Verlinden down, and he knows he'll do that with low kicks. Linden caught that kick from McKinnon and delivered a shot himself. Here comes McKinnon moving forward. Body shot. It's going to be about timing for Verlinden on the low kick, or any of the kicks for that matter, because he wants to step inside and land the punches, especially that straight right hand. That straight right got through from Verlinden to the body of McKinnon. McKinnon being from Australia, who had so many great fighters from that country. In Muay Thai, it was Paul Briggs, John Wayne Parr, and of course, in boxing, one of the legendary fighters, Jeff Fennick. So it's a country that has really, really had some great athletes. And McKinnon hopes to follow in that. But that low kick by Berlinden, that seemed to have uh, created a problem for McKinnon. And the high kick from Berlinden. McKinnon has power. 37 KOs out of his 49 wins. I find it interesting that Berlinden is standing directly in yep. front of McKinnon. He's not. See, look at this timing on these low kicks by Berlinden. They are ex exceptional. McKinnon misses with the uh, right and falls down. Comes back with a high kick. Berlinden so excellent at his dis distancing. I mean, to be on the outside, when you move in, it's just a fraction of an inch away. So stay away from anything damaging that McKinnon can do right now. He got that jab through too good, Berlinden. McKinnon. The veteran, 36 years old. Another thing is Berlinda's really starting to time that uh, McKinnon right low kick and check it every time. And that's my the... combination there yeah. from McKinnon. And then counters. Oh. Got a nice right through. Oh, ho, ho. Nice left jab, right high kick. It was blocked by McKinnon, but part of the effect happened to hit McKinnon because when you have your hand next to your head and you get kicked in your hand, your own hand hits your head. Berlinden has McKinnon against the ropes. He's staying aggressive. He's really reading McKinnon's timing and distancing perfectly right now. See a lot of red to the body, though, of Berlinden. Shows that that power that McKinnon has as we come to an end in round number one. <laughs> A flurry to end that round. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, they both went after each other. McKinnon really trying to strong on Berlin and Amber up against the ropes, which was a very good game plan. Showed some flashes in that first round. Yeah, he really did. He sets up those low kicks with that jab, and that, that one kind of buckled the knee a little bit. McKinnon, I think it may have hurt him. I don't know if he sprained his knee, but there's another inside low kick by Berlinden. Perfect. Uh, the reason why that wasn't a knockdown is because it wasn't a devastating blow that, that hurt him. He just jumped back up. But that kick landed. It was, it was the toes that landed right on the jaw. It would have been the shin. It may have been a different story because uh, McKinnon may have not been able to shake it off. In your corner, in your corner, in your corner, back in your corner. Fight! These are two big men participating in the light heavyweight tournament. Always got to wonder how much gas these guys have in the tank. That, that there was a good left knee on the inside by McKinnon, who is a lot busier, and he needs to be because Verlinden is going to walk away with this. Um, because he will be the faster fighter. Oh, look at this high kick. At that almost clipped for Linden. Just missed with the high kick, did Steve McKinnon. Coming out with a sense of urgency. Combination followed with by a knee. For Linden counters. High kick again from McKinnon. Seems to be finding his target now. Yeah, McKinnon is really just starting to unload now. Rather than hanging back and waiting for Berlinden, he's not going to be able to counter attack Berlinden. He's got to be first in this fight. Otherwise, he's going to be shortchanging himself. Got that jab too, but Berlinden landed to the ribs with a big kick. 
But for Leap, on the other hand, he's got to think maybe I better be first now because it, right now McKinnon is having his way. Under two minutes to go, round two. Steve McKinnon in the white. Philippe Verlinden in the black trunks. High kick from Verlinden. I see what Verlinden is trying to do here. He's trying to figure out the timing of McKinnon so he can land a big shot on the inside to the chin. Fighters exchange here in the center of the glory ring. This is a kick from McKinnon followed by a big knee. This is a tough fight and this definitely favors McKinnon's style of fight where they're in the trenches brawling like this. With the, with the knees, punches, good combination by McKinnon to the body. This is the action that we were expecting between McKinnon and Verlinden. McKinnon gets a kick to the thigh and the fighters clinch up. One thing I really liked in was shades of Andy Hu, one of the great karate fighters. McKinnon threw a spinning heel kick at the leg of Verlinden. Verlinden faded back, got out of the way, but then McKinnon threw another low kick tie style and landed. Some red marks to the ribs and the body of Philippe Verlinden. McKinnon seems to be off finding a stride here. Yeah, he really is. And I think what it is is that what shocks me is that he's out hustling for Linden. For Linden is letting him into this, uh, you know, fight again. Nice to see him. No, 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 no. The Linden went down. And McKinnon automatically threw a roundhouse kick at the down opponent. And that is definitely a no-no here in glory. Let's see what our referee Chris Wagner says. Yeah. That's gives a, him off. Yeah, you can't do Warning. That. He, he pulled the kick. He didn't, otherwise, he could have knocked him out. I've seen that happen so many times in real pride fighting championships. The guy who kicked the guy who's down and then he's out of there. But Ten this ain't back. That's right. Ten seconds to go here in round two. here in the quarterfinals. We take a look at some of the action there in the second round. Yeah, doubling up on that jab and going to the body and digging with that left hook. And even though Verlinda tried to counter with the kick, Verlinda was all over him. And here it is. Uh, you know, good thing he pulled that kick. You know, actually he kicked over his head, but Verlinda's going, wait a minute. What are you doing, man? You want to give me the win on a DQ? And Gloria, you can catch the kick, correct? You can catch the kick, and you can deliver a shot quickly after you catch the kick. You can't sit there and hold it. Quickly being the key. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Fight! Round number three. Philippe Ferlinden in the black. Steve McKinnon in the white. McKinnon coming out with power on those two low kicks. He's kicking hard, and down goes Verlinden from a kick. What a kick from Steve McKinnon. That knockdown for Linden, first knockdown on the fight. But the thing was, it wasn't technically a knockdown because it was a kick to the leg. There wasn't a lot of damage done. So it was kind of a thing where you kick a guy and he goes down, but he jumped back up. If he would have been hurt as a result and, and staggered getting up, the referee could have given him a count. Oh, spinning heel kick. What's going on? Steve McKinnon showing a little bit of everything from the arsenal now. Cannon just coming alive with the kicks, mixing up with punches. Again, like we saw in that last fight, this third and final round might decide who moves on to the semis. McKinnon facing the number two fighter at light heavyweight, doing everything his way in the second and now the third round, controlling the action. He's really brought his A game tonight into the Glory 9 New York tournament. McKinnon, a veteran, began kickboxing at age 16. Got his black belt at age 16. He's been doing this a long time. Savvy veteran. Knee just misses from Verlinden. Verlinden's got to do damage here. Seems to be happy to counter right now, and that's not going to get it done. Front kick from McKinnon. 
because McKinnon, in my opinion, has piled up a lead here in this the third round, which could be the final round. Riders exchanging. Look at the swelling to the body of Felipe Verlinden. He's all scratched up from getting kicked. Need, punch, yeah. a little bit of everything. Steve McKinnon is just not letting Verlinden get set at all right here. Under a minute to go in the third and final round. Battle of really two Muay Thai practitioners. It's incredible as we've seen in the first two fights, they've gone to the judges' scorecards. Yeah. Maybe cardio is going to be the key to winning the Glory 9 light heavyweight tournament. But Lennon tries that jump left, flying knee, didn't land. McKinnon coming back, raging in. Under 30 seconds to go. You, for Lyndon, maybe feels a sense of urgency, but McKinnon keeps pressing. High kick from McKinnon. 10 seconds to go, just minute misses with the spinning back kick. McKinnon pulling out all the stops with the, with the spin moves here. Wow, what a finish for McKinnon. Seriously. Well, three fights in the tournament so far. All three have gone to the judges' scorecards as we check out that round three action. Yeah, here at McKinnon is all over Philippe, and Philippe gets kicked on the inside leg and lands right on his rump. And not technically a knockdown, but it sure was a point score. That's for, you know, because he, he worked, didn't do a lot of damage. And here they are again, uh, same move. that really didn't look good for Philippe in that round. And that was uh, the highlight of that not looking good. And here we go, the spinning heel kick, which is blocked. But nonetheless, it's all McKinnon coming right after the number two guy in the division, Philippe Belinda. 36-year-old veteran, Steve McKinnon. Ranked number five in the light heavyweight division. Looked very impressive here in New York. Remember to check out all the fighter rankings. Visit our website, gloryworldseries.com. You can join the conversation on Twitter at the hashtag Glory9. We want to know who you think is going to win this light heavyweight tournament. We're gonna find out who's moving on. We go back to the glory ring and Tim Hughes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds, we turn it over to the judges' scorecard. They score this bout. 29-28, McKinnon. 29-28, Verlinden. And our third and final judge, 30-27 for your winner by majority decision, Philippe Verlinden. Philippe, the crowd didn't necessarily like that decision, but Steve was a tough opponent, wasn't he? Yeah, Steve was a very tough opponent. We made a good fight, so... I'm sorry, guys, I will do better the next fight if you like more uh, spectacle. But we made it, both are different, so congrats to Steve also. See you in the next match. And what, uh, what went right for you and what went wrong for you in that fight? Yeah, I think I made a little bit the fight more. Uh, yeah. Falling, falling down is not scoring points. Okay, well, congratulations on moving into the tournament. You might uh, face Tyrone Spong or Michael Duke. Philippe, the Belgian Bull, Berlinden. Well, the New York, New York crowd did not agree with that decision. Verlinden came in ranked number two. That's where he will stay. And talking with the judges here ringside, they did not count that as a knockdown. So that was a key to Philippe Verlinden moving on, moving on into the semifinals where he will face the winner of the Tyrone Spong-Michael Duke fight.